Roseanne got canceled. Mother f Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar. Before I have a mental breakdown over here, let's have another virus investigations, ladies and gentlemen. No, I actually really couldn't care about Roseanne. I, th I heard the show was good, but, you know, <laughs> I, guess I, I guess I missed the fucking mark on that one, ladies and gentlemen. But I, what I won't miss the mark on is another interesting piece of malware. Now, today's episode consists of Jigsaw's Ransomware. And again, you know, I, I always like covering, you know, the malwares that have a little bit of uh, creativity to them added. You know, uh, something like uh, Jigsaw's Ransomware does seem like it has creativity added to it, you know what I mean? It, obviously... If you watch the Saw movies, you know who Jigsaw is. He's that, he's that motherfucking serial killer with Billy the Puppet showing up all the goddamn time. Great set of movies, okay? Pretty much jumps the shark around the third something uh, movie. Uh, that, 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 that's when the twists become pretty apparent. But this isn't a review of the Saw movies. In fact, if you want to know about the Saw movies, you got to sit down with me and Kyle and watch those movies. It is a ass-blastingly good time. But uh, this virus seems to be created by, I, I assume, with the English that it has by the other random Indian scammers that come out. And there was somebody who sent a private message to me off of this who said, Moody, you gotta stop being racist. It's not always Indians that write pieces of malware. You're absolutely correct. But in my line of work, when I used to work in it, whenever I would uh, ever follow the hot tip of calling one of these scam numbers, I would always get a, Hello, this is Scott calling from Ohio, Columbus specifically. Sure, Scott, calling me from Ohio, right? So, you know, personal experience aside, <laughs> I'll definitely check my privilege as time goes on. But all jokes aside, ladies and gentlemen, Jigsaw Ransomware is a real and spooky threat. No pun intended. Now, this one was released somewhere around 2016. I believe it was April, so to say. And this one is technically called a Bitcoin blackmailer. And that's exactly what it does. It blackmails you for Bitcoin. It specifically asks you to exchange United States currency for Bitcoin, $150 specifically, and transfer it over to you uh, or transfer it over to these people and you'll get the decryption key. Now, this virus is pretty uh, interesting in particular because, again, it uses Billy the Puppet to attack you. This virus has many ways to mask itself and many ways to hide what it's truly pulling off. But like most bits of uh, ransomware, once you get infected by one of these, it's almost impossible to get yourself out of the situation. Specifically with more of the craftier malware like Petya or, you know, the um, uh, the, the Wanna Cry malware that existed, it ends up becoming into, it ends up uh, forming into a situation where unless you, unless all the stars align in the world of cybersecurity, you're going to lose your files. They're going to be encrypted in a format that's just going to be impossible to crack with reasonable terms, uh, reasonable tech and reasonable time. And frankly, at that point, you know, you're better off just either paying the ransom or forgetting about the files to begin with or praying to God that you have somewhat of a recent backup for the important files in particular, which is one of the key things that anybody in CyberSec will definitely, definitely point out. You got to make sure you have pristine, clean backups because nobody wants a backup or something's latently hidden into it. So you got to have clean backups. And frankly, you got to just be careful in what you're launching, dude. Some of the biggest mistakes happen in a situation where people just launch stuff without knowing. The biggest problem in any form of cybersec, in my opinion, is the human mind, the, hum the, human be the person behind, the person in front of the screen, so to speak, because that's where the most latent, that's, that's the biggest attack vector for anybody. And no bigger sign is that in how this one spread. So Jigsaw's ransomware was intended to be spread entirely through email attachments. So you would get some form of attachment, whether it be masked as a PDF or it would be masked as, you know, just your standard executable file. So I don't know, somebody could send you a random EXE file and maybe the, maybe the most gullible person could believe it. And hell, if one person is dumb enough to do it, you got to remember it. When this kind of stuff gets spread, it's spread in the millions of millions and millions of people. So even if one person clicks on it, it's a success because it almost doesn't cost to do anything like this in the first place. So you got to take it from that kind of a situation. Now, as the time has went on in the year 2018, Jigsaw's ransomware doesn't even have a master server to connect to. So when you're doing this kind of stuff, and when you're testing ransomware in particular, be very careful. If it's not recent, you might not even have a master server to reach to if you got to pay a ransom, even though you shouldn't in the first place. Do the stuff on a VM. In fact, if you don't know what you're doing, don't do it in the first place. This one will definitely uh, encrypt your user files and your master boot record. So even if you try rebooting your computer or you do some crazy shit and think you can get away with it, you're fucked. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, let's go and exactly see what Jigsaw's ransomware is capable of. You can't spell analysis without 
Hello, ladies and gentlemen, analysis time as always. Now, of course, we have a virtual machine created over here, ladies and gentlemen. Fresh off of the presses, I don't think there's much more for me to really add on top of uh, the fact that we are running one of the dankest virtual machines right now. Not really, it's going to be sent to the recycle bin as time goes on. So, I'm actually going to get the samples first off of a uh, cloud that I made over here because, frankly, Windows Defender is going to lose its crap. So, again, general uh, general terms over here when you're dealing with any... It's really installing Candy Crush Soda? Oh my god, Windows, you got to stop doing this. So, first uh, order of business, obviously go to your Defender security panels and please, for the love of god... Just turn these off. Otherwise, if you're ever going to try fucking around with viruses, Windows Defender is a crafty bastard and it's going to stop you from everything. So turn off every single thing over here. Again, all of this turns itself back on. Then download all of your samples before you continue. So let's get down to business. So pro tip, when you're installing any form of uh, VM software, always use the drivers that the VM manufacturer pretty much ships with them so that you don't really have to deal with any slow performance or whatever. I was using this VM for like 20 minutes and I was like, what the f why is it so slow? And then I forgot to install the drivers for it. So make sure, make sure to do for that. Muda's pro tip of the fucking of the week. So uh, install or copy the VM over here. Now, the reason I don't actually give these uh, samples out or publicly is because A, they're virus samples. I don't want you guys to get busted here. Not Well, not busted per se, but uh, I don't want you all to have your computers ransomware because you open these things and hit them by mistake. So I, I sort of keep them on VM systems myself. Again, if you want to dick around with these, make sure you know what you're doing. So quickly go into your folder options real quick if you can't see extensions and just make sure you can see the extensions for every file type so you can just basically go over here and slap .exe onto it basically turning into a valid program uh, you can change this to a text file or a jpeg all you want and it'll read as a jpeg or text file but usually if the file is in a certain type like this for exe keep it exe so anyways let's hit uh okay and see what we get over here. So we're launching the program, and ooh, Microsoft Smart Screen says, the application may cause damage to your device. Sensitive personal data may also be at risk. Oh, more info, jigsaw.exe, ignore Windows malware warning. So Windows is telling me, uh, don't, don't do it. Like, it's literally giving you a don't run button, but I'm gonna click run anyways, cause why not? And I need Net Framework 3.5, so <laughs> give me the magic power of editing and I'll have all the required cancer needed to launch this bullshit. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen, we've got Net Framework 3.0, so finally giving the allowance over here. Once we've launched it, it's given me the thank you, congratulations, your software has been registered. Confirmation code 994759, so probably should write that somewhere, but I'm not going to bother with it. Email us this code in the chat to activate your software. It can take up to 48 hours. All right, so I'm pretty sure this is part of some, like, massive, like, other type of program. Like, I don't know, some video converter, like, PC Optimizer Pro <laughs> or something of the sort. And we weren't supposed to see it. So basically, at this point, the payload is launched. So if I just go into, like, Task Manager, should I, should I see something theoretically? So let me just go around here. Performances. We've got about... Uh, actually, wait, how many cores did I give this? Six cores. Uh, memory, well, memory seems to be disk. Okay, the disk is getting fucking destroyed. So over here, you can kind of see that right now. Uh, <laughs> like, if you look at the average uh, response times over here, this is getting written to pretty hard. So you can see like 9.6 megabytes per second at certain places. And if you actually go around over here in the disk, so you can see a service host local. Oh, whoa, that was, that was fucking freaky. <laughs> Holy shit, I did not expect that. So you have your computer files have been encrypted, your photos, videos, documents, etc. But don't worry. I have, wow, well, I love how it's like slow NES F, like F, text reading shit. So I've not deleted them yet. You have 24 hours to pay 150 USD in bitcoins to get the decryption key. Every hour files will be deleted, increasing in amount every time. Okay, so after 72 hours, all that are left will be deleted. If you, English wasn't really the strong sort for this, if you do not have Bitcoins, Google the website <laughs> localbitcoins uh, dot, well, whatever, purchase 150 American dollars worth of Bitcoins or 0.4 BTC. I love how, like, if that was active nowadays, this motherfucker would be making way more than $150. The system will accept send the Bitcoin's address specified within two minutes of receiving 
your okay i'm just gonna wait for this to all finish it's gonna take me forever <laughs> It's like it's like I'm re it's like I'm reading a fucking it's like I'm reading Chrono Trigger but the text is like super slow. So basically, it'll be receiving the decryption tree, try anything funny, and the computer has several safety measures to delete your files. As soon as okay, so it's just it's just going on. So it's actually cutting off if I if I actually heighten it. So clear oh. Oh my. Oh my. Okay, so let me tell you if you Oh, it's just two jigsaws, really? Oh, I thought I thought I thought it would be like it, it would just repeat itself. So over here, it's giving me like an hourly thing over here, and it says one file right now will be deleted within an hour. So it even says thank you. So it's it's like the nicest uh, it's like the nicest ransomware too. It, all, it also has courtesy. I think this is Canadian ransomware. But if you go to view encrypted files, it'll actually showcase you what is exactly encrypted on your computer. So uh, Thick Satan has the app data local, local, everything is just fucking encrypted at this point, okay? So you can see your app data folder is gone, your local stuff. It doesn't really have a lot to encrypt because, again, it's a fresh VM. But if you had photos, if you had videos, if you had things in your download folder, your desktop, I don't know, whatever, you'd be losing files left, right, and center. So it's got a Bitcoin address. And it says, I made a payment, now give me back my files. And if we hit OK, uh, the, pro the program tends to crap itself. Are you connected to the internet? Try again. They actually have no master server up at this point. So basically what happens since there is no master server involved, these guys actually can't, they'll, it'll just delete your files. You can't do anything because, because there's no master server for the program to communicate to. If you got this nowadays, it, this is the problem with ransomware is even if you are willing to pay $150 because they've given up on the ransomware anyways, there's no way for you to actually get your files back at all. But there are ways for you to do something. So if we actually close, say, try to close the application, one of the things will happen. We'll say, you're about to make a very bad decision. Are you sure about it? Okay, we won't do this, but there are ways you can handle this in more practical ways. There are decryptor programs a lot of people have created, and usually it's popular with common uh, malware to, or common ransomware type deals where they'll create, where a lot of the community members or white hat hackers will create or analyze how this works uh, and create a decrypt, or sorry, a, a decryptor, I guess you could say. So let's get the jigsaw decryptor and see what we can do. Uh, so just give me a second. Okay, so fun fact, we actually seem to have a turf war going right now, ladies and gentlemen, where uh, it seems Windows is deciding to say, you know what, I see ransomware is running on a computer, so go, I'll, I'll tell it to go fuck itself. But uh, at that point, it actually killed the Jigsaw ransomware that was running, so it probably might have led to a situation that may be theoretically unfixable. So over here, what I wanted to show you is all of the files have been sort of encrypted in something called a fun file, I guess you could say. So that's what it calls it. You want to have some fun, right? You ever watch the Saw movies? You know what I'm talking about. Uh, so everything is a fun file. So without something totally destroying my system, I'm going to unlock this decryptor and actually get it running. So with the decryptor, it says it can't be reached right now. Well, let's just hit run, see what we can do. So at this point, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to select, I guess, the download directory at this point, uh, just to see where we can find such files. So it's going to scan the directory and, well, at least decrypt stuff. So at this point, it decrypted the files in particular. So the, whatever was in the fun file, it actually looked at that and decrypted it. Now, of course, this doesn't get rid of, I guess, any other type of um, encryption software. At this point, I believe latently Jigsaw, Jigsaw's ransomware could still be running, or Windows Defender might have killed it entirely. But even with that said, the issue that I'm sort of looking over here is that this tool is really just used to decrypt files, pull them off, and wipe the computer clean because once something like this is entrenched into your computer you really don't want to dig around with it too much but that being said that's really all we can do about it so the decryptor software did its job it decrypted the original source ransom file that the program ransomed away from weird set of circles holy crap but it works in pretty much what you accept expect so we deciphered files we encrypted files and frankly uh, before Jigsaw does anything crazy to this virtual machine, we're going to put it down and put it out of its fucking misery. So, yes, virtual machines were harmed in the creation of this video. That being said, uh, let's head back to the main video. And that was Jigsaw's ransomware, ladies and gentlemen. My God, what an interesting piece of malware. It's got all the beautiful pigeon English that you can imagine and Billy the Puppet, just two of them at least. So if you have ultra-wide monitors, well, you're going to be in a sad situation because... <laughs> Like, fuck, does he, he doesn't exist, he doesn't exist on, Re he, there's no three Billy the Puppets.
at least from my knowledge. But an updated version of this was released at some point, which actually did threaten to dox the victim in particular. I didn't have that version specifically, or I didn't let this thing run far enough. That VM that you saw was thrown into the fires of Recycle Bin Hell. Right now, Satan of Recycle Bin is torturing the hell out of that VM, and in some ways, I do feel pretty bad, but uh, we all gotta move on in some way, shape, or form. So, what we've learned over here in particular is that this is one of those ransomware viruses that we actually have a chance to decrypt our files from. Unlike ransomware or any of these other ones where once those files were encrypted, there really wasn't many ways to get those files back. And that was because once these files are encrypted using that, you know, 256-bit encryption, eh, you're not realistically going to crack through these things. The way that a decryptor was actually made for this was, if you've noticed in the VM, it required me to install net framework files. So net framework, and this is going to get a little wordy and techy, but the best way that I can kind of compare it is if you look at Java, and this is a very layman's comparison, but if you look at something like Java, which uh, sort of has its own virtual, uh, virtual engine, virtual machine type of deal when you're launching the programs, uh, net framework is sort of designed to be primarily run on Windows systems, but allow connectivity with non-Windows systems as well. So the way that net framework programs work, and you might have actually run a net framework program on your own time anyways, chances are, I bet you a lot of you have used it without even knowing. How net framework works is that unlike a regular program that you might be running on Windows that's running on, I guess you could say the hardware environment, just natively on Windows anyways, net framework runs on a software environment. So basically, when you're running a net framework program, it's running in sort of an application virtual machine. I guess you could say, which provides its own set of memory management, you know, exception handling, all that kind of good stuff. And stuff that's designed for Microsoft's net framework, which started out as proprietary tech, but ended up eventually becoming really popular over time, is used by a lot of programmers for various, various reasons. Now, with net framework applications, there are plenty of decompiler programs that exist, or decompiler programs, debugging it becomes very easy, is you can attach these decompiler programs, and if you're a software engineer that has absolutely no idea how reverse engineering works, remember when I told you about assembly and opcode and all that kind of stuff? Well, basically, if you put a net framework program into a decompiler application, so to speak, then you're actually able to pick apart the source code um, as time goes on. In fact, go look for a decompiler application yourself, download, I guess, any net framework program that is compatible with the decompiler, and you should be able to see how the guts of it works. In fact, it's kind of an easy way for a lot of people to learn some programming and how some functions in a program might work. But regardless, because this ransomware was created using that framework, it was a matter of putting it into a decompiler, um, assessing how this program worked, what kind of keys that it used, what methodology that it used in its own background to you know, encrypt your application in the first place and simply reverse engineer that and create a decipher with relative ease. And with that decipher, you were able to cleanly get your files back and be on your way. So because you were able to actually get how the program operated, it became an easier situation for you as well. Something like CIH or Petya or, you know, anything, any virus that, even if it is open source, it, any good hacker, any good modifier, any good programmer, any, any, any person that really is a black hat hacker will definitely take the source code if they want, modify it enough to put their own quirks in it, and you probably won't be none the wiser unless you're really good at disassembling this kind of stuff down to a bare low level uh, ana ana analysis, if you will. So unless you're a good reverse engineerist, you won't be able to figure out things uh, on any real ransomware. But since this was written in that framework, which does allow you to look into something with little to no knowledge, you can see how it's easier and you kind of dodge a bullet if you get this on your computer, at least from a deciphering your file standpoint. Now me, myself, I've never looked into Jigsaw's ransomware myself. So I don't know if the files, once they get infected or, you know, de-infected, deciphered and say, whatever. I don't, know if the, I don't know if the ransomware stays latent, so I'd always be worried about it. And if you saw in that VM, it was running using Firefox. It was launching a lot. It was, it was basically taking over the CPU processes to begin with. So even if somebody immediately opened up their task manager to get rid of it, and God, if they had Firefox installed, for me, I didn't have it installed, so it's a red flag. But if somebody does have it, they might look at a simple process and just say, that, that couldn't be it. Well, see, that's how you end up getting 
pro- that, that that's that's how you end up dodging the bullet if you're the black hat uh, hacker, if you will. But as with all bits of ransomware, good things must come to an end, ladies and gentlemen. So with Jigsaw infecting our computers with the spooks, and I really should have done this video on Halloween, so to speak, but I bet you by then we'll find something even spookier. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been your virus investigations for the week. Be careful in what you download. Don't do some stupid shit on the side. Don't don't click on that advertisement that tells you all about those hot Russian local singles in your area. It's not real, okay? Don't 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 look at the million uh, how to earn two million dollars using the simple trick in five minutes. Be careful on the internet, okay? Just just be careful. Have a good antivirus package. Be smart with your decisions, and overall, just have a good time and. Make sure your data isn't stolen, okay? That, that's all I can really tell you. So that being said, ladies and gentlemen, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike if you dislike it. This is me, Mudahar, and I am out.